We have a few special messages in this week's episode. Congratulations to Freya Waring and Dylan Altman on their impending nuptials. Way to go, you crazy kids. Also, a belated birthday wish to Eleanor Cummings from her grandkids. Remember, sis, 80 is the new 60. And now, Faux Fiction Audio brings you another case from the spiral-bound and sticky note files of Mickey McKinney, Boy Detective. Mickey McKinney, that mini-mystery man, solves the cases that plague the halls of Maple Ridge Middle School with his trusty partner and friend, Sam Hayes. No pet or project too lost, no cafeteria food too mysterious, no case too small when Mickey McKinney is on the job. The name's McKinney. Mickey McKinney. Joe Namath is quoted saying, when you win, nothing hurts. 14, 23, hut, hut! What? Hey, squeak, you got the ball, get moving! I take issue with this statement, as I feel that when you get tackled by half the guys on defense, winning still hurts a little. All right, all right, get off of him, you guys. Good job. Good job, defense. Stopped him before he reached the end zone. Hey, Pipsqueak. Nap time's over. Let's go. Oh. Hayes, give him to the bench. Uh, uh, Michaels, you're up. Let's save your running back material. Come on, Mick. Let's get you up. Oh, has it been an hour yet? <laughs> Not even close. Good call on that last play, Hayes. The little run actually gained five yards. Well, sir, I figured the sight of four linebackers chasing him might give him the incentive he needed. Don't you think, Mick? I feel like I just came out of a waffle iron. Yeah, I don't think he'll make the cut. Should my legs be feeling numb? But you're still my star player, Hayes. Good work. Thank you, sir. Come on, Mick. I think I swallowed some dirt. I would not be surprised. The name's McKinney. Mickey McKinney. For those of you wondering, I would be happy to explain how I got into this situation while I wait for a feeling to return to my lower extremities. It all started, believe it or not, with an interview. Alright Sam, now I know this is your first interview, but just stay calm. Sydney is known for pitting people against each other in her broadcasts. So, uh, just follow my lead. All right, and we're live in three, two, one. Good morning, Maple Ridge Mountain Lines. This is Sydney West bringing you news that's the best. We've got a couple of announcements for everyone, but first, I'm here with two very special guests. Mickey McKinney, our school's very own private detective, and his assistant, Sam Hayes. Actually, I'm not... Thanks so much for having us here, Sydney. So, Mickey, what's it like being the mastermind behind your business? Well, Sydney, I'm not sure mastermind is the right word. Oh? Word around is you're quite the genius when it comes to solving cases. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I just... genius? Someone said that? Oh, absolutely. With you as the brain and your assistant as the brawn, you're quite a team. Brawn? Hey, I am more than just hired muscle, Goldilocks. Yeah, Sam is more than just brawn. During our last, well, actually no, she did tackle that lunch thief. But there was this one time where, no, she wrestled that pig to the ground. Actually, last week she, oh wait, she punched out the hallway bully. You're not helping. I'm trying, but it's true. You do a lot of brawny stuff. Well, at least I'm not a wimp who can't tackle a fourth grader. Hey. I told you I miscalculated that jump. You missed him by a foot and landed on your face. Oh my, so much conflict. Sam, do you feel like you're doing too much of the heavy lifting? If it wasn't for me, McWimpy here wouldn't close half his cases because he isn't tough enough to catch them. Hey, I am plenty tough. How about you put your money where your mouth is then? Fine, I will. Wait, what? Great. This Tuesday we're having football tryouts for new running backs. Hasn't the football season started already? All our running backs are in the hospital with an epidemic of hives, so there's a few spots available for you to try out. If you can't last an hour, then you have to come back on this broadcast and say that you're Mickey McWimpy and you're a chicken brain. Oh yeah? Well, then if I win, you have to wear a skirt. Fine. Wait, seriously? That's it? Uh, I don't know. It was the first thing that popped into my head. 
Seriously though, would it kill you to look like a girl once in a while? You're wearing so much of the football field you could be from Curse of the Swamp Creature. Oh, it's on now, Pee Wee. You heard it here first, Mountain Lions. Mickey and Sam in a battle to the finish. Who will be victorious? Be sure to follow me on the school website as we will be posting updates all week. I'm Sydney West bringing you news that's the best. And now for our morning announcements. <laughs> Rise and shine, Sleeping Beauty. The team's doing laps around the field. Uh, can I sit this one out, Coach? I, I'm really yeah. sore. Ah, oh, sure. Of course you can, buddy. You just take it easy today. Thanks, Coach. I think I'll just lie down for a little longer. On your dainty feet, Princess. Up, up, up. If you can't move your legs, then you can walk on your hands. This is the big leagues, Pipsqueak. You're not in kindergarten anymore. You can't just sign up and make the team. I don't even want to make the team. I just need to win a bet. Oh, so these tryouts are a joke to you, are they, Tinkerbell? Uh, well... Get off my field! Great. Now I was going to have to embarrass myself in front of the whole school. On the bright side, I wouldn't have to put myself through the agony any longer. I was almost at the field and home free when I spotted a familiar figure hanging around by the equipment locker. Tommy Tubbins. That kid just kept turning up like a bad penny. I wasn't surprised he'd made the team, given the fact that he was the size and shape of a small gorilla. But what was he doing hanging out suspiciously and talking on his phone? I had to get closer and check it out. You sure this'll work? Cause if coach catches me, I'll be kicked off the team for sure. Well, I ain't chicken, I just... No, I'll do it. I want to take my spot back as quarterback from Hayes once and for all. Thank goodness there was this handy laundry cart to hide in. <laughs> Ugh, make that the dirty laundry cart. If my least favorite bully still had a grudge against Sam, it was probably in my best interest to let her know so she could string him up on the flagpole. Or punch him out like she usually did. If it wasn't for me, McWimpy here wouldn't close half his cases because he isn't tough enough to catch them. On the other hand, if I nabbed Tommy Tubbins without her help, then she'd just have to accept that I was as tough as she was. Uh, but I was still gonna need some help. Good thing I had someone else to call on. No! Oh, come on! I, I just need to borrow them for five minutes. I'll be careful. This is coming from the guy who destroyed the last of my nano mics last week! I did? When? When you sat on them! Do I look like an idiot? No means no! Come on, Burners! I need to know what Tommy's plan is. What if he manages to take Sam's place on the team? You know what football means to her. So tell her what you heard! You don't need my help! Unless you two are still fighting. How do you know about that? Well, you had your whole fight over the school loudspeaker. And even if I didn't hear that, Sydney's been getting coverage of tryouts on the school website. Huh. I got a nice picture of you screaming in terror. So cut the baloney before I set your pants on fire. What do you really want? Okay. Maybe what Sam said got under my skin a little, and maybe I want to prove I'm not a wimp. Just like Sam wants to prove she's not all brawn? What do you mean? <sighs> they think you're the smart one. Fine. You can field test some new surveillance equipment. But I'm coming with you. Uh, don't you hate leaving the lab? Yeah, but I hate losing my prototypes more. And if I give you any of my tech, you're going to break it. Well, look who's back. Where have you been, small fry? Uh, just ran to get my lucky helmet, coach. Well, if you think that'll help. Go join the team. We're running blocking drills. Yes, sir. Burners. Burners, can you hear me? Loud and clear, small fry. <laughs> if this radio transmitter I got in your helmet can pick up an ant passing gas if I wanted to. Okay, um, ew. Okay, boys, let's have the first stringer show the recruits how this is done. Oh, uh, why you always choose first string? Some of the other guys want a shot. Tubbins, do you recall what my job is as captain? You call the shots. That's right, Precious. So long as I'm captain, I call the shots. Wow. Tommy really hates Sam as captain. Just try and get close enough to Tommy to plant that mic I disguise as a bracelet on his wrist. Seriously? You want me to put a bracelet on Tommy's wrist? You want this audio or not? Fine. Just gotta sneak up. Hey, what do you think you're doing? 
I, nothing. I just, the drill looked easy, so I was making room oh, for it. Oh, I think the drill is easy. Smallsville, go ahead. Why don't you take first run at the block and dumbass? I, I, do what with the what now? Uh, uh, Mickey? Uh, based on my calculations, if in a contest between you and that dummy, uh, you're not gonna win. Shut up, I can do it! Let's see some hustle then. Move, move, move! Charge! <laughs> Wow, look who's a sight for sore eyes. You don't look like you got any sleep last night. Uh, I think even my bruises have bruises. Here, McWhiny, try out this ice pack I've been developing. It's twice as cold and lasts twice as long as the ones on the market. I didn't even get to put the bracelet on Tommy. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> that was actually a distraction so I could slip the real mic into his gym bag while everyone was watching the coach yell at you. <laughs> Tell me we've got the audio. Oh, come on, have we met? Of course we've got the audio. I haven't heard anything exciting yet, but uh, turn up the volume here and we get... Gross! Yeah. I'll keep an open channel during study hall, just in case. Ah, ah, and, and you should probably uh, uh, get, get rid of that uh, ice pack because it's smoking! What? Ah, get away! Sorry! You're still getting the dosage right? And, and you let me put that on my face? I'm not gonna have some sort of weird reaction, am I? <laughs> well, you're not glowing blue yet, so I'm gonna say no. But, but, um, if you start floating or develop interesting abilities, you know, let me know. I could always use another test subject. How many do you have? Ha <laughs> uh, uh, there's the bell! You should probably get to class, bud! Bye! Great. So far, the events of yesterday had resulted in numerous bruises, aches, and pains. And the dubious possibility of developing superpowers through a prototype ice pack. But thankfully, I'd survived my hour of football tryouts, so all I had to do was make it through the rest of the day and- Hey, Mickey, how'd you do on the English home- Oh my god, what happened to your face? Why, is it glowing blue? You think that's bad? You should see the blocking dummy he bounced off of. There's a little tiny dent about the size of him. Sam? Mickey, I just wanted to check and see if you'll be at final tryouts tomorrow afternoon. You still have to survive another half an hour. Half an hour? Wait, if he already went to practice, why does he have to go again? Because he hasn't stayed conscious for an hour yet. He keeps getting himself knocked out. Of course, he could just save himself the agony now and just give up. Never. Fine. I'll see you there, Mick Wimpy. I'll be there, Mick. Ugh, who cares? Mickey, you shouldn't go back. You're not... I I just mean the other guys are a lot... Tougher? Bigger? Stronger? Yeah, I'm getting a little tired of people saying that. I need to prove I can do this, that I don't need Sam to save me all the time. There's nothing wrong with admitting that there's something you can't do. Or having a friend who always has your back. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get to class, Kai. History class won't wait for me. Alright. Be careful at practice. She kissed my cheek. Suddenly, there's no pain. <laughs> ah! My hand! Oh, jeez. And the pain is back. It's strange how you never miss something until it's gone. But cases were a lot more demanding without Sam to help with the workload. Maybe it was because I had been a while since I worked a solo act. Maybe because we branched out on clientele with Sam's extra muscle, but it didn't help that I wasn't operating at 100%. And more than one missing pet slipped out of my fingers because it somehow sensed I didn't have the strength to chase it down. I just located Lucy Sim's pet pig when Burners called me on my cell. Here, Oda. Come here, girl. Gotcha. Stop struggling. Hello, Burners? I'm a little busy at the moment. He's planning to embarrass Sam at the big game by sabotaging the footballs! You have to warn her! She's never gonna believe me. Besides, I said I wanted to handle this one without her help. D Whoa! Oda, here girl, come back! Oh yeah, Mickey McSmarty Pants. It's your best plan yet. Look, if you're too stupid to ask for help, you're gonna need to make the team so you don't arouse.
arouse suspicion. And where will you be while I'm used as the team's punching bag? Oh, I'll think of something. Swell. Now I had to go endanger my already aching extremities again for someone who had belittled, insulted, and stuck with me since day one. If I had known a year ago that I would have not one, but two crazy, bossy, and insulting girls in my life that I considered my friends, I wouldn't have believed it either. At the moment, at least one of them was being set up to take a public humiliation to smear a football career, and whether or not my bruised limbs were up for the task, I had to do what I could to keep Tommy's plan from succeeding. All right, boys, good job on that last play. Everyone, get some water and be back in five. Could we get the team medic to peel Flat Stanley off the field and give him a once-over? Or a ball pump? Thank you. Seriously? You really think he's mountain lion material, Hayes? Mickey would say, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. I could fit him in a purse. We have to carry him off the field every time someone tackles him. Lace him up! We could always use a spare ball. Shut up, Tubbins. Nobody asked you. Wow, you look worse than usual. Burners, what are you doing here? <laughs> Working undercover as the team medic. Duh. My first aid training and partial doctorate are already paying off. It occurs to me I could have saved myself a lot of pain if I'd just done that. Only if you're okay with losing your tough guy image to be a nurse. Touché. Okay, nurse me up. But no smoking ice packs. Sure thing. Um, this might sting a little. Ow! Okay, listen up. Here's the starting lineup for Friday's game. If you hear your name, go pick a jersey. Adams. Brady. Doric. Edwards. Finch. Well, there's no chance I'm on the list. Sign me up, Burner. So, so long as Sam doesn't get embarrassed. Who cares if I get called Nurse McKinney for the rest of the year? McKinney, Patrick and Yarwick, thank you to everyone that showed up. New Mountain Lions, I want you here at 5 p.m. sharp. We're playing the West Mount Magpies. Let's break some beaks! I, I did it, Burners! I made the team! Yeah! Way to go, tough guy! Ow! Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to our season opener between our very own Maple Ridge Mountain Lions and the West Mount Magpies, I am Chase Matthews. And I'm joined here with Sydney West as your commentators for today's game. It's nice to have you here, Sydney. Thanks, Chase. It's nice to be here. The Mountain Lions are coming onto the field led by their star quarterback and the first female captain in Maple Ridge history, Sam Hayes. Guys, I know some of y'all, myself included, doubt the decision of making Sam Hayes the starting quarterback. However, you can't argue with the fact that Sam's athletic ability speaks for itself, as she has broken almost every passing record held by Maple Ridge players in just a few short weeks. And there's the kickoff. The ball goes deep into the end zone. And out. The Mountain Lions will start on their 20. The Mountain Lions break their huddle and come to the line of scrimmage. Hayes takes the snap, drops back, goes tight spiral to Johnson. Johnson makes the catch. He's moving downfield, and oh, Johnson gets hammered at the 30 yard line. First down, Mountain Lions. Bernice, do you read me? I did mention I invented these, right? These babies could pick up a signal on the moon. You mentioned that about 20 times, and yet, still picking up static. See anything suspicious yet? Not a red leader. The only person who's been within five feet of the spare balls are the ref and the ball boy. Ball boy? A squatty little kid, almost as small as you. Very funny. Just keep your eye out for anything. Ow! What's going on with our mics? Uh, something seems to be interfering with the signal. Uh, hang on. I helped get rid of the running back. Not my fault. You didn't make the team. Wait, what was that? Uh, I, I don't know. Must have crossed signals. Uh, I'm still trying to clear it up. No, go back. Try, try and find it again. Give me a second. Sabotage Hayes. 
football. Last quarter. Wait for my signal. It sounded like Tommy. So that's his plan. And it makes sense. Embarrassing him near the end, then he can take her place and make himself look like the hero. Folks, something strange is going on down on the field. Time out! Hayes, get over here! What kind of Fandango are you doing out there? Or Tommy could start embarrassing her now. Sorry, Coach. I'm just really itchy for some reason. D don't worry. I can take it. You're not hopping around my field like a cat on a hot roof. Go check with the nurse. Edwards, your quarterback. Get out there. Run a Delta Charlie formation and tell Doric to watch his left flank. Coach, what about me? Not unless I have to, short fuse. Mickey, you read me? Loud and clear. What's going on with Sam? Judging by my irritation and some trace amounts of powder, someone put itching powder on the inside of Sam's uniform. I sent her to the locker room to rinse off. So Tommy's already made his first move to replace her. Let's try and keep him from making another. Well folks, that's the end of the third quarter. The Mountain Lions are on top, 35-31. Quarterback, Sam Hayes, though absent in the first quarter, has been unstoppable after returning in the second quarter, throwing for five touchdowns. Well, I don't know, Chase. I think her shining moment was that little dance she did in the first quarter. Yes, it certainly was. Weird. That's for sure. Mountain Lions with the ball. Hayes takes the snap, drops back to pass, and... <laughs> did I just see that? She actually threw the ball backwards. My eyes might be deceiving me, but that was one of the worst passes I have ever seen. I saw it too, and all I can say is well, that no one's perfect, including you. <laughs> if I'm right, Hayes will be looking to make up for that last pass on this down. Hayes takes the snap, Johnson is open, and uh, well, that was strange. It looks like she lost her grip on the ball and went flying into the stands. Time out! Time out! Time out! Hayes, get in here. Sir, I'm sorry, I don't know- What you did wrong? I'll tell you what you did wrong, Hayes. You threw two consecutive passes that would have embarrassed a two-year-old. I can do better, Coach, I promise. You'd better, or I'm benching you for the next month. Get back out there! Burners, I got a warner. Sam, wait a second. Not now, Mickey, I'm in the middle of a game. Sam, Tommy, he's trying to sabotage your game. You can't go back in there. Tommy? I'd love to believe that, Mick, but he's been on the bench for most of the game. Look, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's planning to humiliate you and take your place at the same time. And unless you have proof, I gotta get back out there. But... <sighs> Burners, she's not listening. We have to keep her from playing. All right, I'm on it! Well, wait, what the heck is that? Just the blue pipe I invented. Okay, so Sam is 20 degrees north with a slight breeze coming in from the east. Target locked. <laughs> Right in the leg! Ow! What the? Oh, whoa! What did you just do? Oh, relax. It's just a dark filled with a mild paralytic, concocted from a few spider poisons. Her legs will be paralyzed for about mm, ten minutes or so, then she'll be fine. Hey, get up! This isn't nap time. Coach, I, I can't move. Clear the way! I'm gonna come through. Wee woo, wee woo. What's wrong with her? How much time do you have? What? I did. I mean, um. <laughs> It's a t obviously a spider bite. Look, see the swelling here? Caused her legs to go numb. Uh, I've got some antitoxin in my kit. Just let me drag her to the bench. Can, can, can I go ahead here? All right, I'd better. Edwards? Where's Edwards? Locker room, coach. He was feeling sick. I think I'm having a nightmare. All right, Tubbins. You got your wish. You're a QB. Now get out there, and don't screw up. You got it, coach. Folks, looks like whatever problems the Mountain Lions were having has been resolved, and well, I don't believe it, but number 17, Tommy Tubbins, is running out onto the field. Infamous for punching a ref last year for an incomplete pass call, I, I didn't think we'd see him anytime soon. Personally, Chase, it's good to see some masculinity on the field. And Tubbins has it in spades. Wow. Please, Sydney, there are children here. Mountain Lions come to the line of scrimmage on third down and ten. 
Tubbins takes the snap. And oh, Katz, did you see that? He just threw a pass through the end zone and into another zip code. Tubbins is really bringing his A game tonight. Burners, has Tommy ever thrown the ball like that before? Never. He's barely third string. Sam, how'd you get in your piece? Burners had a spare. Listen, Nick. I, uh... I'm, I'm sorry about the fight. And for not believing you when you warned me about Tommy. Well, it's about time. Mickey? All right, all right. I'm sorry I said you were just the brawn of the team. And called you a swamp monster. You're actually very pretty, uh, when you don't have mud on your face. Okay, great. Everyone happy? Good. Let's get back to work. I think I know how Tommy is throwing those long passes. My equipment is picking up a radio signal that exactly matches the trajectory of the football. So he has a remote-controlled ball. No, but... Okay, okay, yes. Okay, actually, yes. That's correct. Well, there's a first time for everything. So how do we neutralize it? Well, I should be able to jam the signal, but Tommy would be throwing as well as he normally would. <laughs> Which is not at all. No. No? Are you crazy? Do you want him to chin and win the game? He's been trying to humiliate Sam all evening. I say we return the favor. Mick, I never thought I would say this, but sometimes you're not as stupid as you look. Thanks. But hey. You two behave. Have to focus. Locking in on the signal. And... Oh, hey! Huh, I got it! You'd feel better if you didn't sound so surprised. Go oh, shut up. Let's see what this thing you can do. Folks, something... Strange is going on down on the field. It, the football is well, it looks like Ow. it's chasing Tubbins around the field and Somebody beating him out. on the head. Ow! Ow! Obviously Ow. something is Ow. not right with that football. Looks like the referee and parents are trying to catch it. <laughs> nice. Burner's trying to drive him toward the Ow. other team. Ow. No, no. Ow. I'll pass the cheerleaders. Get it away from me. <laughs> okay, Burners. You, you can stop messing around. <laughs> Holy cow, the football! It just exploded in midair. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody seems to be hurt, but hold on to your hats, everyone. The officials are having a conference at midfield. Folks, I just got word. Due to the uncertainty of when that unusual football was tampered with, the officials are suspending the game. We'll have to schedule a rematch for a later date. What a shame. After a terrific second-half performance by Mountain Lion quarterback Sam Hayes. Let's not forget that pass by Tommy Tubbins. The one that no one can catch that went out past Nebraska? Wow. It was so masculine. Shut up, Sidney. This is Chase Matthews with Sidney West. As your announcers tonight, get home safely, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Why did you destroy that football? Actually, how did you destroy the football? I, uh, I didn't. I'm guessing Tommy didn't want anyone from school discovering what was making it work. I don't think it was Tommy, though. I mean, we did just watch him get beat around the head with the football, and he wouldn't have been able to control the ball and throw it at the same time. Tommy was talking to someone on the phone last Tuesday, then today about his sabotage plans. His partner must have been controlling the ball. Mr. Mystery again? Great. So he probably hit the self-destruct button when Burners took control. C couldn't have been someone in the stands, at least. Would have had to be on the field to get a good signal. And be able to have access to the spare balls. Not many people have that privilege. The, the ball, ball boy! Of course. I should have suspected him from the start. He has as much access as anyone on the team without being a player. Quick, let's nab him before... He's gone. Where'd he go? Probably destroyed the ball and ran. Mick, don't worry. We'll catch him next time. No, we can't let him get away. Quick, Sam, what was his name? I don't know. He just joined this week. I was too busy with tryouts to learn his name. Uh, well, maybe he's still here. Sam, that toxin Burners gave you should have worn off by now. Oh, How about you and uh, I split up and... Mickey! Well, wait. Go back. What did Burners give me? Uh, nothing. Uh, she might have shot you in the leg with a dart full of spider poison. But, but I swear I didn't know that's what she planned to do. Hey! You're the one who said we had to get her out of the game. Okay, so I'm starting to get feeling back in my legs. Tell you what, I'm gonna give you a 10 second head start. Then I'm coming after you. 10. Wait, is she serious? Nine. Very funny. Oh eight. I'm I leaving. Get out of my way. No, I don't think she. No, Oh, jeez. I'm so pushed. Oh, God. Oh, my leg. Oh, my leg. Oh, Wait, what?
what's with the dress? Oh, uh, well, Mickey technically stayed conscious for an hour, and, you, you know, he did say... Ah, well, it's, it's a good change. So, where's Mickey? The... <laughs> Yeah, he, um, he mentioned he had something to do this morning. Burners? What's so funny? No, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. Good morning, Mountain Lions. It's Sydney West bringing you news that's the best. Before we do our morning announcements, someone has something to say. Uh, morning, everyone. So, I'm back, and I'm here to say... My name is Mickey McWimpy, and I'm a chicken brain. And, and I shouldn't have let Sam Hayes be called my assistant. She's my partner and my friend, and the toughest girl in school. Okay, uh, that's it. <laughs> who your friends are, don't you think, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Episode 5, Mickey McKinney, Brawn and Brains, was written and directed by Ruby Fink, with story by Nicholas Johnson, Ruby Fink, and Violet Fink, and music by Leon Biscara. Faux Family cast includes the voices of Lucas Guerrero as Mickey McKinney, Violet Fink as Sam Hayes, Leanne Labra as Burners, CJ Longhammer as Tommy Tubbins and Chase Matthews, Corey McCary as Coach Higgs, Hannah Edelson as Kailani Groom and Sydney, and me, Lindsay Werner, as your announcer. This recording, the characters and situations within are the property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. So, until the next case, Faux Fiction Audio says goodbye.